We're at the Studebaker National Museum in South Bend, Indiana. My happy place. <laughs> Here we go. Buckle your seatbelts. We're going to give you a tour. When you think about what Chevrolet and Ford were putting out in 1953, and then you look at this, it's like you're looking into the future. This is a 1953 Studebaker. It's often called the Lowy Coupe. Raymond Lowy was the head of the design studio that created this car. When you compare it to what Ford and Chevy were offering at the time, you'll see that it was much lower and didn't have nearly as much chrome, both Lowy trademarks. He was ahead of the curve on weight reduction before the other big three manufacturers were. He had signs all over the design studio that said, weight is the enemy. I'm standing between two Golden Hawks, Studebaker Golden Hawks. This is a 1956, this is a 1957. Some people argue, and I believe, that these were the first muscle cars. Pontiac GTO gets the title of the, of the first muscle car, but these really are the first. In 1956, this car had a 352 cubic inch Packard V8 in it, making 275 horsepower. In 1957, they went with a Studebaker V8, which was 289 cubic inch, but they put a supercharger on it and made, to make the same 275 horsepower. So these are the first muscle cars. Studebaker started out making wagons. The company expanded in the later part of the 1850s with cash brought back from the California Gold Rush, where one of the brothers had gone to make his fortune. But he didn't get rich by finding gold, instead earned his money building wheelbarrows for the gold miners. For those of you who remember, woodies were kind of a big deal in the 50s. Well, Studebaker experimented with it but never produced the car. This is actually one of one. They found this body in th at the proving grounds, um, just not too far from here and they recovered it. The wood was all rotten and this thing was restored to its current condition. So it was saved, but it, this is an extremely rare car. I mean, one of one this is about as rare as you get. This is a 1937 Studebaker Coupe Express. This is the holy grail to Studebaker collectors. What it is, is they took a coupe body and they put a pickup bed on it. You may have heard of that before. Chevrolet called it the El Camino and Ford called it the Ranchero. Well, Studebaker did it in 1937, long before Ford and uh, GM did theirs. Come in the bathroom. I want to show you something. So Studebaker made a lot of military vehicles, uh, be actually beginning in the Civil War, but I was in Vietnam, so let's talk about that. I actually drove one of these in Vietnam. This is the vehicle that I would operate when I was there. It was the five-ton tactical wrecker. My job was to recover vehicles that, that would break down or lose a wheel if they ran over a mine or, you know, all kinds of things happened while I was there. Uh, it's like a tow truck on steroids. The boom in the back would rotate, not 360 degrees because the cab got in the way, but it would come around probably 270 degree rotation of the boom. It would extend, I forget how far out it would go. I could pick up the front end of pretty much any military vehicle with a winch on that boom. So I drove a Studebaker in Vietnam. So let me talk about the 1950 that's over my right shoulder here. The production run for this particular platform was 1947 to 1952. So the Starlight Coupe has the, the wraparound back window. If you ask somebody that knows a little bit about Studebakers who designed it, they will say Raymond Lowy, and that it came out of the Raymond Lowy design studios. That is a fact. But what happened was the head of engineering at Studebaker did not much care for Raymond Lowy. I don't know what the problem was. I don't know if it was because Lowy was a Frenchman and he didn't like French, he didn't like foreigners or what, but, but for whatever reason, he didn't like him. And he went to one of Raymond Lowy's employees, a guy named Virgil Exner. The head of engineering got Virgil Exner to design a car in his basement, unbeknownst to Lowy. And keep in mind, Virgil Exner was in charge of the Studebaker project at Raymond Lowy and Associates. 
so his day job was to design the car for, for Lowy. His night job at his house was to design the car in secret. So when the car got revealed to the executives, this car came out of his basement and they selected that car. Virgil Exner actually held the patent on the Starlight Coupe design, but Lowy get to, got to take credit for it because he was the designer for Studebaker on record. Because he was working in secret and unbeknownst to Lowy, his boss, he was fired virtually on the spot when this happened. Studebaker hired him to be the chief designer, but they didn't have a design studio. So he still had to work with Lowy, and you can imagine how that worked out. And I don't think it lasted more than six months before Exner had to give up that job. He landed on his feet. He ended up at Chrysler and the Chrysler's from 55 to 61 or 2 are all Virgil Exner design. You'll hear them referred to as the forward look and that was Virgil Exner. Well guess what, even the Muppets drove a Studebaker. The Muppet movie of 1979 featured a Studebaker in 1951 and what was so cool about it is that you may think the Muppets were actually driving the car but there was a driver. They modified this car so that a driver could ride in the trunk and with the help of a video monitor was able to drive the car. This is a Packard. It's a concept car, but this is a Packard. And you might wonder, why is a Packard in the Studebaker Museum? Well, in 1953, Studebaker and Packard merged and became the Studebaker Packard Corporation. This was a car that they were experimenting with. I mean, all manufacturers do concept cars. And some of the unique features of this car would be the hideaway headlights. This section, it's like a T-top, but instead of removable, it, these, these things roll up into the roof and the back window goes down. Yeah, that windshield would be, uh, would have been a nightmare to replace. As you can see here, this is a 1932 Studebaker President. The unique thing about this, besides it being, I think it's a beautiful car, uh, when you compare it to what was being built in the 1930s, the engine that they used in this car was actually the same engine that they used in their Indy race cars. Yes, Studebaker campaigned cars at the Indianapolis 500 for a few years, and the engine that they powered those cars with was the engine that they used in this President model. By the early 60s, Studebaker was in trouble. They actually brought in a fellow by the name of Sherwood Egbert from McCulloch Products, McCulloch Superchargers, Paxton Superchargers, same company, to dissolve Studebaker. But when he came in, he kind of fell in love with the, with the car company and decided that he was going to try and save it. And this was the result. He brought Raymond Lowy back in to design this car. And him and a team of designers rented a house in Palm Springs, California, and sequestered themselves in this house for more than a month and had the full-size clay model of this done in that time period. And the rest is history. This car was only produced for two years, 63 and 64 by Studebaker. There have been different versions of it. The Avante II, as it's called, was produced first by Newman and Altman, a, a Studebaker dealers here in South Bend. And then it's gone through different hands over the years. But the original Avante, the original Studebaker Avante was two years, 1963 and 1964. Egbert's attempt to save the company didn't work out and a few years later, they shuttered their factories for good. A sad ending to a company that started out building wagons in 1852. I don't get it. Why are we hiking? You never want to hike. Look, we're in the D. What do you mean, the D? This is the Studebaker tree sign, the largest living sign in the world. What? 